was eight years old, I just knew there was a God. I knew there was God, and there was no question. It was like, I know I'm going to be safe. I was a trick rider since I was a little girl. They would, you know, we did um, tricks on fast horses, and my father trained them. It's really a special place for us in the community. We, we claim it. We don't even recognize the Grand Canyon. This is the only canyon for us. We go there and get spiritual rejuvenation and our sustenance spiritually. is. It's just we feel it there. It's, it's a great place to be. We gave, we gave everything to a people that washed up on our shore. We gave that. We gave them land. We gave them medicine. We gave them a way of life. They took over the land and um, they put us on this resolution. Because a lot of people were being captured there and uh, some of them didn't move away from it. The people that were trying to kill them. I'm trying to get, get them all, the Navajo people together so that they can um, capture them and have them move down to Fort Summer, New Mexico. But somehow, some of them, they, uh, they hide up in the canyon. And it's way up in the, the nits of the canyon, of the, of the walls. That's where, that's where the, um, you know, it's not so big of a cave, but it's just a place where they were hiding. And the soldiers, they uh, found a way to um, shoot their their bullets, and then it, it, these bullets they cornered back into where they were sitting, hiding. So that's how, how a lot of them got killed. Uh, the Long Walk uh, was a forced um, uh, action by the U.S. government when they forcibly at gunpoint, all of the Navajos, um, men and women, suffered and children uh, at the hands of the U.S. government. They had Kit Carson, who he did all of the rounding up of Navajos forcibly and made them walk. In January, they began the, one of the coldest months of the year. To maintain survival, they did everything they could, even taking seeds out of horse manure. Genocide, elimination of the American Indian. And I think that's, that's one of the most tragic things that ever happened to the Navajo people. She left from this valley to New Mexico, and then when they were released, she made it back out here. My great-grandmother was born on the way home from the Long Walk. Um, they wanted us to sign the paper treaty to, to um, 1868 time that was signed. After the Navajos came back from the uh, Fort Sumner, we were just assigned a small section of the reservation. Right now, to this day, uh, it, it's a vast area within the United States, the biggest uh, reservation.
song and it talks about Pearl Harbor and, and, and the warriors that were there. It says, I shot up towards the sky and it came down. It came down. So he goes, Navajo co-drivers are a very upheld, honorable group of uh, warriors that fought for the U.S. government. My uncle was uh, one of the original 29 code talkers. Mm -hmm. He told me one time that I'll do what I can, but I don't want to be really recognized. And they were just very young boys, but um, they rushed to go be code talkers. would be public land instead of um, federal land and uh, because the, the government does not own us. American Indian is governed by eight, over 800 laws a day. Yeah. If I went to Gallup and they wanted to decide to enforce that law today, I could be arrested. Um, I could be arrested for you know, driving up interstate. Housing is inadequate, water is inadequate, and everything is substandard on the reservation. See, I built a house, and I wanted to have it insured. So I went outside. There's no insurance company on, on the reservation. When they heard me say that I built a house on the, on the Navajo reservation and I want to insure they say, no, we can't go on the reservation. So we don't, we don't have a whole lot of businesses on the Navajo Nation that we'd like to have. I think if we did, it would make things a whole lot easier for us. But, you know, we get caught up in this government tape. It, it does hold us up and people get very exasperated and they give up because they say, it is just amazing out here what you have to go through to put up a business. Whereas if you just stepped out of the boundaries and tried to put up a business, it, it, it's a go. So it's just really kind of a, it's very dis disappointing, disheartening, discouraging. You know, it's those, that's what the reservation does. And as long as the government thinks, that, oh, they're out of sight, they're out of mind, then they don't have to deal with us. Yeah, there's no job. And then learn more about the, the outside and, and all kinds of white people's way. When it's time for us to come home to our elders, us parents, we come home and we start where we need to learn about our own culture and what our parents said us to learn. No matter how old we get, and then from there we teach our young kids again and grandkids generation after generation. My preference for being here is that I was born and raised here. My father was born and raised here. My grandfather was born and raised here. Some of us, we've traveled all over the world. We know what the world mm -hmm. was, was like. And, mm -hmm. 
you get across the oceans and you just want to be home. So as long as you know your land, this is yours and what you gave, and you know the plants and you know the stars, you're never going to be lonely. You're always going to know your directions and you're always going to be kept safe. But for some people, they're, they're pretty much raised on uh, how to live off of the land, like um, uh, planting and raising livestock and taking care of them. And, you know, the, the food is there for us. So uh, if we're raised like that, then, um, you know, we don't, we, don't, we don't really need to have electricity. We don't really need to have uh, transportation where we have, like, um, horses. And um, we have basket weavers, and um, we make all kinds of arts and crafts. And, and then after, uh, and then we do some jewelry, and, and we sell them out there and to tours at Four Corner, uh, where they sell all kinds of craft shows. I want to, I want my grandkids or my great grandkids to one day wake up and realize that this really wasn't government land, it is ours. This is still my land at all. My parents used to bring me here in those days. Um, there were just little trailers where we met, and then after the clinic was built, that's where we met too for church. And along the way, I, I kind of forgot. And then one day, I, I just decided to come back to church and reaffirm myself with the Lord that I am His child. So that's what I did, and um, to this day, I'm still going to church, and I pray. It's a really um, a beautiful life for me to be a Christian. Well, with my Christianity, the one thing that I'm thankful for is that I learned it, and I went to a mission school. Right now, I'm caught between two things. Christianity and tradition. But, when I read the Bible and everything like that, these different verses and stuff like that pertain right back to where the traditional ceremonies and things that they do. Not just the Navajo people, but American Indians. They're very spiritual people. They've always been. We would not be here if we weren't spiritual people. I think one of the things that we believe in is that we all pray to one, one, one God, the Creator God, even though we may do it in different ways. Above the Great Spirit, I am now praying. I am now praying. To believe this way is a is a kind of the light in the way. It is not scary. It's everlasting life. It's a good life. You don't live in fear. Throughout my life, I have. I have questioned, I have been a weak Christian, had to get down on my knees and ask for forgiveness, give me the strength to go on, give me the courage, and I think that through the, some significant things in my life, God has shown His grace. When I had uh, breast cancer, I was really um, sad and, and um, I didn't know what to do. So I prayed every day and the Lord helped me. He healed me. I feel that um, the Lord is, is always there to help and heal you. I have um, 
a real mentally ill sister living with me. And I help her 20, 24 seven. And then my, my grandson gets seizures, so he stays with me. And he looks to me a lot for help. And then um, I have um, um, sisters. I have a bilateral amputated sister. And then I have another sister. Not another sister. <laughs> They're all not well. I have so many illnesses in our family. You know, um, it's just the grace of God that we're all okay. He is my strength and I know it. And um, if, if I didn't have it, I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna be filled. We're not bashing anything else. We're not here to bash the culture or you know, that connection's happening with the traditionalism and the Soviet but our Christianity and our church is still here for, for us to uphold. Jesus.